recording a public meeting. You cannot stop a reporter. Sir, you can't, you can't arrest me for reporting. I can arrest you for not obeying the order. I'm a reporter. This is a public meeting. This is a public meeting. Sir, this is a public meeting. Last chance. So this is a public meeting. Last chance. I'm a reporter. Stand up.
Surely in America, a journalist would not be prevented from recording a public hearing, one that's open to anybody. But that's what happened to reporters who used cameras to record the proceedings at the Washington, D.C. Taxi Cab Commission meeting. Instead, they found themselves handcuffed. Take a look at this. Sir, you can't, you can't arrest me for reporting. I can arrest you for not obeying an order. I'm a reporter. This is a public meeting. This is a public meeting. Sir, this is a public meeting. Last chance. So this is a public meeting. Last chance. I'm a reporter. Stand up. Joining us now is one of the journalists arrested yesterday, Reason TV producer Jim Epstein. Jim, even though this is an unpleasant subject and they put you through all that, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome to Freedom Watch. Thank, thank well, you very much, Judge. What the heck was that all about? Under what authority were you guys arrested? Uh, I, you know, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, um, what, what you just saw is a video that I actually uh, captured on my iPhone. Um, and then uh, it was of um, uh, Pete Tucker being arrested. And then later on, a, a few minutes later, when I was trying to leave the meeting, because the meeting was breaking up, um, then the, uh, the park police then were going after me to try and confiscate my iPhone and delete the video that I had just recorded. And obviously they did not get the iPhone from you because you've given the video to us and we're showing to the world uh, what the police did. Well, they, they did get the iPhone, actually, and they, uh, they kept me downstairs in a cell for, for about uh, five hours. Um, but luckily, they did not delete anything from my iPhone. Uh, Reason sent a lawyer, who, uh, and I was out by that afternoon. And they, they ended up not uh, um, touching anything on the phone. Did, so they file the any did, did, did they file any criminal charges against you, Jim, and, and against the other fellow that was arrested with you? Yes, they did. Uh, they filed uh, charges of uh, disorderly conduct and unlawful entry. And uh, is there actually going to be a trial on this? I mean, because you didn't unlawfully enter and your conduct was not disorderly. That's objectively visible from the film. Yeah, uh, in terms of the status of the charges, that's one thing. I pr it's still ongoing, so I probably shouldn't speak to that. But right. um, Here's what I do want you to speak to. What kind of a government do we have that watches us with cameras everywhere we go, but recoils in horror and uses force when we try to watch the government with cameras. You know, Judge, I think one thing that uh, um, cops and judges and uh, everyone in law enforcement is really going to have to get used to the fact that uh, there are going to be cameras in courtrooms, there are going to be cameras in public meetings, and they can't react to that by trying to confiscate them. This is a new reality, and it goes all the way up to, uh, to the Supreme Court. Uh, my Reason TV colleague did a great piece uh, on um, uh, the, the need for cameras in the Supreme Court as well. Um, I, think you're, uh, I, I think you're right on the mark, and, and the, the judge in your case doesn't care about my opinion, but my opinion is it's clear under the First Amendment you have the right to be there, you have the right to record what you're observing. And the Constitution was written to protect that right. Good luck to you in this trial, Jim, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Judge.